Hey guys, it's Chongi. I um, know a lot of you guys couldn't make it to the presentation, uh, the workshop last night, so I thought I'd run you through uh, what we went through with everyone. Um, so we've got a 28-day partner challenge uh, starting uh, yesterday. Um, the goal of the 28-day partner challenge is to get us ready for silly season. Um, you know, there's a saying, it's not what you eat between Christmas and New Year's, it's what you eat between New Year's and Christmas. So we've still got a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of weeks left before uh, Christmas. And, you know, um, it's not about going into, we want to make sure that our fitness is there to serve us. So we want to go into Christmas and New Year's and have as much fun as possible um, without feeling guilty about needing to hold back. So this workshop is about teaching you some healthy habits um, that will hopefully um, you can implement um, now and also after the after silly season to um, you know get you performing better, looking better, and feeling better. Um, you don't need to do this with a partner per se, um, but you know working with a partner does make it more fun. So um, this is a cool little saying, um, you know, a cool little quote I found is your body is never out of shape. It's always in shape, created by how you've moved to this very moment. It's constantly responding and shifting to a continuous shift of inputs provided by your external and internal environment. So. You know, ultimately, it's um, it's your body, it's your choice, um, and all the decisions that we've made have brought us to where we are now. Um, there's no judgment. You know, if there's anything that you're unhappy with, um, you know, um, you know, you can make new decisions, new better decisions to um, get you closer to where you want to be. So the goal of the goal of this um, workshop is to provide you with the best information that we know to, that I know um, to help you get to your goals. Cool. So, um, you know, if, if there's um, if there's certain things that are holding you back, um, generally I think it kind of falls into kind of one of these categories: mindset, recovery, nutrition, training, um, and community. So, we're going to go through some habits that kind of fall into each of these categories. Um, pretty simple um, habits. I think most of you will um, will you know will be doing some, if not uh, most of them. Um, so, just to think about what you're not doing at the moment. So um, other things to think about is the dominoes effect. So a domino has a potential energy within itself to knock down something one and a half times bigger than, it, than itself. So with these actions, the goal is to create a dominoes effect that will have a flow on effect for um, for the rest of you know for the, the rest of your health and kind of fitness goals. So um, the actions will be simple. Um, they may not be easy, but definitely simple. Um, and where possible, um, we'll use technology to help us. Cool. Um, and just a, a final, final thing is try not to get caught up in the details. You know, a lot of you guys, like I said before, will be doing most, um, a lot of these things. So it's to just think about what your uh, your limiting factors are. So there's a, a famous kind of strength and conditioning coach called Julian Pinot, and he talks about the key log theory. So um, when people used to do logging in rivers, um, um, there would be, you know, the, the logs would get stuck in the river. Um, what you could do is you could go around and kind of find the stuck logs and pull them out. Um, but there was always this one log, this one log that was somewhere along the river that you would pull out and would unlock everything. So, you know, some of us, you guys are already doing lots of these things, but, you know, what's that key log in your training? What's that thing that's holding you back? Is it emotional eating? Um, is it sleep, um, which is causing that emotional eating? Um, is it booze on a, you know, is it booze on the weekend? Um, and can you spend the next 28 days focusing on this limiting factor? Um, and, you know, so that you can, you know, get, get amongst um, silly season without kind of, um, you know, um, without regret. So last thing, first question is how fast do you have to be to run, outrun a bear? Um, the answer is just fast enough or faster than the person next to you. Um, try not to be perfect. Try not to be perfect. Just try to be better than yesterday. Try to be better um, than you were before. So um, habit one that I'm going to have everyone work on is set an alarm for sleep. So I'm going to go through kind of why sleep is so important and why I think this is potentially, you know, something that's holding a lot of people back. Um, you know, sleep is the top priority for your health and fitness. It restores everything in our body, um, makes us feel good, makes us perform better, makes us recover, uh, makes us digest food better, um, helps us regulate our metabolism. Um, you know, if you don't have, if you suffer from, if you haven't had a good night's sleep, you end up having those cravings. Um, and as well for a, you know, from a performance point of view, it helps us make and recall our memories. So if you're studying, if you're trying to learn a new skill, um, you know, during during that night, um, our brain is ordering our thoughts. 
Um, so insufficient sleep, um, compromising our fat burning, compromising um, our recovery, so muscle building, um, disturbs our appetite. You know, you wake up in the morning after a late night out, you know, after having a kebab at three o'clock and for some reason you're still hungry. Um, affects our mood, memory retention, productivity, um, increases our stress hormones, compromises our immune system, sexual dysfunction, premature aging, cancer, heart disease. Um, you know, when you start thinking about all these things, if you're not getting enough sleep, um, you know, somewhere along the lines, you know, th those things are definitely going to hold back your goals. So the challenge um, for the next 28 days is to, you know, prioritize sleep if that's your, your, um, you know, your, your limiting factor. So the way that we do this is we create our sleep ritual. Um, everyone has, um, everyone goes from zero to hero um, very quickly in the morning. Um, and, um, but they don't have a, um, but they don't have a, a ritual to bring them from, you know, from hero to zero. So, um, we'll talk about, um, why it's so important. Um, but, you know, minimize your screen use, um, ideally two hours before sleep. Um, you know, ideally, um, I think, um, some of you may not be able to do this. So maybe at least an hour, um, Think about activities that wind you down from your busy day, you know, stuff that isn't about stimulating you, but just bringing you down. So meditation, walking the dog, reading a book, um, enjoying some non-caffeinated tea, coloring books, foam rolling, um, Headspace, which is a logo I've kind of got on the right side of the, um, the screen. Um, it's a really good app that you can um, get involved with. They've got a 10 day meditation challenge that you know, I highly recommend all of you guys do this. Um, Red Seal, Sweet Dreams Tea is something that I like. Again, you know, you're all going to have your own things, chamomile tea, but, you know, start exploring um, ways in which you can wind down. Um, and the next thing is to think about that quality of your sleep. So I've got yourself Bunnings yourself to sleep. So a quick trip to Bunnings um, will kind of help you restore and really work on the quality of sleep. Um, they did an experiment where they flashed a little light on the back of someone's uh, knee um, throughout the night, and that was enough to disrupt um, the melatonin response. So that's a sleepy hormone in your body. Um, our, our, our skin is light receptive, so it's really important for you to eliminate the night lights, any night lights that you have in your room, any LED screen emissions. Um, all you need to do is get some black tape from Bunnings or from any electronic store and cover those up. Um, think about installing some blockout curtains. You know, ambient light, kind of light pollution will disrupt that sleep. Think about that experiment. Um, and also think about creating a quiet environment. If you live in a, you know, in a city um, and noise pollution is um, pretty hectic, think about installing uh, or getting some white noise, white noise generators. Um, and if you have a partner that is, uh, you know, that has to study late at night, think about using a sleep mask. Um, you know, not ideal thinking, um, but something that's going to help wind you down. And if you must use a screen, so I know that, uh, you know, a lot of people need to you know, get work done late at night, um, you know, you can install Flux. So Flux is a blue light blocking program. Um, it blocks the blue light from your screens and allows you to, you know, work later into the night. You're probably still going to have that um, mental fatigue of being stimulated, but um, at least you won't have that hormonal response. Um, think about taking regular screen breaks and yeah wear some trendy yellow glasses um, really amazing how much of a big difference um, yellow glasses can make inside you can just get some safety ones from bunnings um, you look like an absolute goofball um, but if you do you know if you want to value sleep you want that performance you want to feel better you don't want those cravings um, definitely definitely think about um, getting yourself a pair and so we stopped here at this point and you know take out your phone pause the video um, and set an alarm for sleep, you know, that is very simple, it's very simple, um, but, you know, it might be a little bit more difficult to, you know, um, sacrifice, uh, the, you know, binge, binge watching those episodes on Netflix or, you know, not playing, um, not playing games online, you know, that's probably something that I need to kind of focus on. Um, and yeah, if you have a partner, discuss, um, discuss with your partner some of your favorite wind down activities. Um, you know, uh, Ben and I went on this weekend um, to look at some, you know, ways in which we can train in nature. Um, one of the most profound things I kind of had from the weekend was it's been such a long time since I've just, you know, had a nap outside in the grass. Um, and it's a very different experience. So, 
you know, think about um, think about things you haven't done for a while, or you know, when was the last time you just sat down, sat still, you know, not before, not for sleep, but just sat still and just calmed your mind down. Um, it's pretty cool. So habit two um, is all about the Sunday ritual. So this is to do with nutrition. Um, um, very um, again, nutrition is a big, big topic. Um, but I'm going to give you some pretty basic guidelines on nutrition, but um, you know, if you don't have a Sunday ritual, or if you don't have meal prep, or if nutrition is one of those things that um, you know is your limiting factor, then maybe can you know the the Sunday ritual and meal prep is um, you don't have to go for full blown meal prep, but preparing your meals and um, creating the system so that healthy eating is um, an easier option than um, than going for you know the easiest most convenient option um, could be you know could be a really good thing for you to explore. Um, I always say that. Um, you know, if you don't have time for meal prep, then you probably need to meal prep. So, um, you know, let's kick off with eating for your goals, um, eating for your goals and for health. Um, I don't think, you know, there are two things that can happen when you sit down um, and um, have a meal. It's either going to take you away from your goals or towards your goals. Um, you know, I don't believe there are any good or bad foods. Um, you know, it's a, it's, um, foods foods need to serve a purpose so um, you could say even like you know coca-cola um, it's you know generally maybe it like you know during the day if you're not doing anything you're sitting still it's probably not a good option but if you are you know you're running a triathlon and you're about to bonk and you need some you know fast digestion carbohydrates then you know that coca-cola is a very good option so um, think about your goals and, you know, when you're eating, are you eating for your goals and equally so, are you eating for your health? Um, I believe if you can eat both, if you've got the sweet spot. Um, cool. So this is a nice um, little uh, pyramid that talks about, I guess, the, um, the hierarchy of um, what's important when, you know, you're eating for your goals and equally when you're eating for your health. So um, at the bottom, we've got, um, I don't like the word calorie balance, but let's say energy balance. Um, this is taken from Renaissance periodization. Um, you know, you can still, you can still eat too much if it's good, healthy food. Yeah. And so if you, if body composition is, is part of um, one of your goals, then you want to make sure that you've got the correct amount of energy balance, whether or not you're training enough and whether or not you're eating enough to support that. Um, the next thing is food composition. So are you eating healthy foods, you know, there's, if there's that approach, which is if you fit, fit your macros and that's great, you know, it's fitting your macros, but if you're eating, if you're throwing in donuts, um, you know, that's not gonna, that's, that's not gonna end up um, as well for health. Um, then we talk about macronutrient amounts and then nutrient timing, hydration and supplements. So think about that from the bottom of the pyramid. Um, this isn't to say that supplements won't help you, um, but they're gonna, you know, if you want to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck from training and from nutrition, it's to make sure that you have um, the base of the pyramid covered before you look into supplements. So, oh, went the wrong way. Um, the next thing is if we were to sum up healthy eating, um, you know, Greg Glassman, I think, said it pretty well. And he said, well, he said it bang on, eat meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar, keep intakes or levels, support your exercise, but not fat. Um, if you were to follow these guidelines, um, you would do pretty well. I think they're not specific um, in terms of um, quantities. Um, but again, what I'm going to cover to you is some pretty basic guidelines to help you get started. Um, but you've got to think of yourself like an experiment. So um, play around with it. Um, I'm going to start with some pretty basic concepts. Um, try not to, you know, don't go too far away from those concepts to begin with if you're just starting um, healthy eating. Um, um, but you, you know, the, the goal is for you to get better at it. Um, so the next rule is if there's something in your cupboard, you're probably going to eat it. So if you're going to start, if you're pretty serious about this 28 day challenge, um, you know, stop this video now, um, go grab all the, um, all the foods that, uh, that are in boxes or packages, um, put them in a little box and, um, give them to someone, you know, um, at the end of the day, it, it starts with your shopping list. It starts with your shopping list. So let's talk about, let's talk about some, you know, some nutrients, some macronutrients. Um, so know your fats, um, healthy fats, um, fats contribute to hormone health, brain function, hair and skin. The way that we know what a healthy fat is, it's just naturally occurring. 
um, you know, olives, nuts, seeds, animal products, um, and it's minimally processed. Um, unhealthy fats, so fats that are created through an industrial process and not um, not natural. Think your margarines, processed oils, um, cooking sprays. Um, you know, there's a shopping list there. Write that down. You know, when you go out for your um, shopping list, when you go out for your shopping, make sure you keep within um, those guidelines. Um, had a little bit about omega-3s. Um, you know, our bodies need a balance of omega-3s and omega-6s. Um, omega-3s are anti-inflammatory, while omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. Your body needs both. Um, but our diets um, tend to be higher in omega-6s, so supplementing with omega-3s is very good. Um, we've got some pretty good um, omega-3 um, supplements at the gym, um, but what you want to look for is a high percentage of EPA to DHA. So um, one to two grams of a good, oh, well, if you get, you're aiming for one to two grams per, per day. Um, if you've got a good supplement, um, you're probably only going to look at getting maybe three to six um, capsules per day. But if it's a bad one, you know, it's, you can get pretty high. Um, on how much you need, how many tablets you need to, to get that. So, you know, if you're not an omega-3, um, definitely think about incorporating that. It makes you recover faster um, and feel better all around. So here is a the rule of thumb for how much, um, how much, when we talk about, um, I'm going to wrap it up later, of how much portion sizes are, but that's generally how much you should have per meal if you're prepping. So, you know, grab a two thumbs worth of almonds and chuck them in a Tupperware and that's your, uh, your fats done for that meal. Um, second thing is know your proteins. So proteins, we all know this, um, proteins are support our immune system, um, they boost our metabolism, help us recover, um, they make us feel more satisfied with our meals. So think about the quality and where your protein is coming from. So grass-fed meat, um, beef and pork, um, you know, grain-fed, um, grain-fed meat is a little bit more expensive in Australia, I'm not sure why. Um, poultry, um, fish and seafood, eggs, you know, think free range, don't go for the cage stuff. Um, happy chickens mean happy eggs. Um, and, you know, um, this is, you know, approaching it very much from a, um, um, from a meat point of view, but if you are, you know, using a vegetarian template, I encourage everyone to play around with a vegetarian template. Um, again, it's just more options for healthy eating. Um, you're going to need to, you know, find more variation within your um, protein. So just think about getting protein from lentils. Think about getting it from beans, peas, tempeh, tofu, all of it. You know, go for the full range. Um, you're going to get a much more complete profile of protein. So here is um, what a portion size should look like. Um, Again, you know, I'd say um, one to two um, handfuls of protein per meal. Um, you can have too much protein. So think about, you know, go back to that pyramid that we talked about at the start, um, energy balance. If you're finding you're eating really clean, um, really clean, um, but you're still not working towards those goals, definitely think about um, energy balance. Um, are you training enough or um, are you eating too much? So better carbs versus no carbs. Um, uh, having a think about um, carbohydrates is pretty important. Um, you know, carbohydrates are a really good source of energy for our body. But again, think about eating for those goals. Sometimes we don't need um, to eat as many carbs as we um, do. Um, but this doesn't say that we want you to go zero carb. So this is where we start talking about smart carbs versus not so smart carbs. So um, health, the smart carbs, smarter options are slow digestion. Um, they're nutrient rich and they're health promoting. So think fruit, sweet potatoes, again, all those things. If you, know, if you can pluck it from the ground, if it's not in a, um, it's on a package and it expires within a week, then you're probably gonna be pretty good. Um, think whole foods, more fiber and nutrients. Um, not so smart carbs, uh, you know, refined, processed and sugary carbs, um, pastries, cookies, sweets, sugary drinks, muffins, pastas, breads, you know, um, pretty much anything that comes in a bottle or a bag or, you know, that will last forever. Um, this isn't to say that, you know, um, you can't go back to these because, you know, not so smart carbs are delicious. Um, but, you know, we want to think about um, that the majority of the meals that we have are pushing us towards our goals.
and here are some portion guidelines that you can go for a fistful of veggies you probably want two or three per meal um, and a cup of um, fruits um, you know again depending on what your goals are maybe one maybe two um, and think of it you know think of that nutrient timing so uh, meal prep tips um, first of all you want to make sure if you have the correct tools um, you know before you start going into meal prep think about do you have Tupperwares, blenders, baking trays, lemon juice, um, pots, etc. Um, making sure if you're going to go into that, that Sunday ritual and you're going to give it a go, um, with, there's a couple of blog articles that I've written on the CrossFit U website, check those out, um, keep it really basic, try not to, um, you know, meal prep isn't fine dining, we had a debate about this last night um, uh, with Sheridan and Gabby, um, they're really good at it, you know, they've been doing it for a while, um, so this doesn't say that it can't be fine dining, it's just that it, you need to have practice at it, you need to start somewhere, um, and when you first start meal prepping, it might not be the most delicious food, but again, it's getting you towards your goals, and, you know, if you stop eating, um, you know, you may not be going for the most delicious meals, um, but at the end, of that, it's only 28 days, and the idea is that you're going to start refining your craft and refining it and getting better. Um, second thing is don't sweat the little things. I'm generally quite lazy, and you know this is something that um, Loz and I do on a Sunday, um, so we don't want to take up a lot of time because this is our you know our, our time to kind of wind down, and relax from the week. Um, but think about taking as many shortcuts as you can. So if you're um, you know if you are chopping veggies, do you need to chop them and make them really pretty or can you just rip them up? Um, I really like blanching because blanching takes a minute. So I blanch my broccoli, my um, cauliflower, um, beans, all those things. Um, blanching is when you put um, veggies in boiling water for one minute and take them out. Um, and then think about baking it, you know, learning to use your oven. You know, meal prep is about having the skills. Um, again, learning how to use the oven, you know, I'm probably the only um, I may be alone on this, but I didn't know how to use an oven for, for a long time. And once I learned how to use it, it's actually quite simple. And then the next thing is practice. So practice makes perfect. Um, when we first started doing meal prep, it took us, I don't know, three hours, three and a half hours maybe. But, you know, we've got it down to two hours now and we can get out most of our meals for the week. So definitely encourage you all to do that. And um, probably going to be going over to Sharon and Gabby's at some point to film some tutorials on how to make it a little faster. So think about here are the, the portion sizes. Um, again, this is a very basic template and everyone's going to be a little bit different. But, you know, the thing about um, it's not about being perfect. It's just about being better than yesterday and having um, a, a template to start with. So think about, you know, with your meals one palm size of protein, then two fist sizes of veggies, um, one cupful of smart carbohydrates. Um, if you're finding that you're tired and you don't have energy, maybe start slowly increasing this, um, and then one to two thumbs of healthy fats. Cool, so habit number three is move every day. So this has been a, um, an, interesting, an interesting thing. Um, for a lot of people, I feel that um, you know when we when we train, when we train, we can sometimes use um, training as a crutch for not moving. You know, so um, you know you wake up in the morning, you've done your training for the day, and then you spend the rest of your day just sitting around on a chair um, or just being still. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of hormonal um, things that happen in your body when you just sit down and being still. So we'll cover those in a second. Um, so this is where that idea of energy balance comes in. Um, you know, this is a um, this is daily expenditure. So we've got um, exercise, which makes up for a small percentage of that energy energy expenditure. Um, we've got NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So think about walking your dog, going upstairs, um, and this can vary massively, but depending on how um, how active your job is. So, um, and you've got the thermic effect of meals. So this is the amount of energy it takes to digest your food. And then you've got your resting metabolic rate. So this is just stuff that um, keeps you functioning, you know, keeps you alive. Um, really important to know that exercise doesn't make up such a big part of this. Um, so 
the idea is and the challenge is over the um, next 28 days is to increase your general everyday movement. Um, I talked about it before is that you know prolonged stillness can lead to metabolic in imbalances that inhibit fat metabolism. Um, just because we move for one hour a day doesn't mean that you know that it counteracts the, the rest of the eight hours. So um, you know when we're not moving, um, our bodies tend to not respond so well to in insulin and the pancreas needs to produce more. Um, moving muscles pump fresh blood and oxygen to the brain. Um, you know, you know, everyone's kind of had that moment where they've been sitting down all day and arguably you can say, well, I've been rested, I'm ready to go. Um, but because we haven't been pumping that, you know, that blood and that oxygen to the brain, we feel sluggish, we feel tired, you know, all we want to do is more sitting. Um, not to mention that, you know, the next thing is that, you know, we generally, when we're sitting down, um, our bodies are very good at adapting to that sitting. So we get weak core muscles. We don't, um, we have tight hips, we've got weak glutes. So um, taking movement breaks is really important. So this is where we, um, you know, start talking about um, using technology to help us. Um, you know, I've, on the right, I've got some, some cool little apps you can install on your computer. Um, timeout, which is for the Macintosh work rave. And what it does is it just pops up little reminders for you to, you know, move around a bit. Um, Katie Bowman is a, um, she, I had a quote at the beginning of the presentation, but she's got a, um, a book called Move Your DNA. And she talks about how um, exercise is movement, but movement isn't. Um, movement doesn't always have to be exercise. Um, and there are a lot of health benefits that you can take away from moving. So, um, you know, our, our brains are more um, are more active. Our brains are, are more uh, what's the word um, alert when we get move when we move. Um, so this is a big thing for everyone at the gym is you know don't let exercise be the crutch for you not moving. Um, use technology to make sure that you're um, you know that you're moving throughout the day. Um, here's some guidelines, you know, take a short break every 20 minutes um, and every two hours, you know, move for 15 to 20 minutes, you know, go grab a coffee. Don't grab a coffee from the, um, you know, don't grab a coffee from, um, from, the, from somewhere that's two minutes away. Maybe explore and go a little bit further away than you're used to. Um, you know, movement is healthy for us. And, you know, Katie's got a theory that, um, you know, in order for us to be um, healthy and we want to kind of replicate the um, the movement of our hunter gatherers um, and our ancestors so she used to say that it's um, you know an average of four and a half k's per day no it isn't much it isn't much um, and it's not it's not about moving fast for that four and a half kilometers per day it's just about about moving and then walking so this is something that I've been playing around with for a while um, and it's the benefits of steady state work. So this is um, even this is even for um, the guys who you know if you want to perform better, um, going slow so that you can go fast. So um, incorporating some steady state work into your your training week is really good. It's not very stressful on the body, but um, what happens is that it develops them. It helps you develop the mitochondria within your muscles. So mitochondria is um, the the part of the muscles that help um, oxid create energy from oxygen. Um, what happens when you start developing more mitochondria within your muscles that um, it starts contributing to um, greater energy product production at higher percentages. So really cool to incorporate in, into your training. It's not very stressful. Um, you know, put on, um, put, on some, put on a podcast you like or put on um, Audible, put it in your book. Um, and listen to it, go for a little run, go for a cycle, go for a swim. Um, very important though, that you um, keep it within your aerobic max. So Dr. Mathetone has a formula. Um, you can check it out on the, on the page now, but keep your heart rate at 180 minus your age. So as soon as you go over this, um, you start going into more glycolytic um, and different energy systems. So keeping it aerobic will help you maximize and develop um, your mitochondria, um, and it's a really nice way to relax, wind down, um, and yeah, and develop your mitochondria as well. So very healthy practice. So your actions for this is to train three to five times a week um, and move a minimum of 30 minutes on your non-training days. So walk, active recovery, 
um, play, you know, throw a frisbee, climb a tree, fly a kite, just do something active. You don't always have to be, um, you know, don't make sitting your default, um, your default position. All right, so habit number four is make it important. Um, yeah, um, I think for a lot of people, health and fitness, um, health and fitness, you know, we want it, everyone wants wants it, but it's, is it that important? So Tim Ferriss talks about as a, the Harajuku moment, um, you know, you see when, you know, you see people um, who make the biggest change in their lives and it's, you know, during maybe um, something significant happened in their life or um, or there's a wedding coming up or something, you know, it's it's important. So um, this isn't so this this habit isn't about disregarding the value of goal setting, um, but this habit is about you know making your goals significant enough um, and hacking a little bit of human nature. So um, the way that we do this in, in order to make it mean something, um, we hack the idea of loss aversion. So in loss aversion is a concept in behavioral economics um, is that most most of us will prefer. Um, avoiding losses than acquiring gains. So, you know, while I could put up a, a prize fund here of, you know, win this challenge and you'll get $1,000, um, that's going to be less motivating to you than if you created it, something to be more personal to you. So stop the video now. Um, you know, take five minutes to work out something that would motivate you to, um, to change. So think about, um, you know, something that you could lose that would motivate you to change. So I'd use the following sentence. Um, if I don't do X, then Y will happen. Um, you know, and if Y doesn't scare you a little, um, then make it a little bit bigger. So for me, if, um, you know, if, um, if I don't get eight hours of sleep per night, then I'll sell my PlayStation, you know, make it, try to make it a behavior based um, goal. Um, you know, outcome-based goals tend to, we have no control over them. So have a think about what your limiting factor is. Um, and yeah, and go give that a go. So I guess the next thing is where to from now. You know, um, the 28-day challenge has started. Um, you've hopefully enjoyed the 35 minutes that I've been talking for. Um, I would, number one, grab some measurements. So photos, jump on a scale. Um, you know, grab um, uh, grab a tape measure, take some you know, take some measures on the point. Um, the idea is that you are your own experiment. You know, um, we want to be better than yesterday, but we how do we measure that? Um, number two is we're going to get involved in the weekly challenges that I um, that I post up shortly, um, and then just sleep, move, and if if prepping is you know if nutrition is one of your um. If nutrition is one of those things that is holding you back, then prep your meals on a Sunday. It takes a little bit, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time at the start, but once you get into the habit, it's definitely something that's really easy to get involved in. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Um, but I hope, wish you guys all the best of luck with the challenge, and I will see you, uh, see you in class.